10 factorial tips that will improve your quality of life greatly. This video is brought to you by Yams, the longest, hairiest, and most loyal wiener dog. Feel free to follow us on Twitch, www.twitch.tv slash Yamakara, Y-A-M-A-K-A-R-A. -A -A -A. Right? Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Number one, the Q key. The Q key, uh, based off your keyboard, is a simple copy key. So you can place down any blueprint. Here, we'll start off by laying some red belts. And you can not have anything selected in your inventory. Press Q, and as long as you have more in your inventory, you can simply place more that way. So we got this guy here, this uh, assembly machine three. Push Q, selects it. Got this big electric pole. Q selects it. That works with anything as long as you have it in your inventory. So Q, rotate, select it, Q, select it, rinse, repeat, Q. And you can grab from really far away, as far off on your screen as you can see. Doesn't matter, as long as you can see it, you can grab it, as long as you have it in your inventory. That makes placing pipes and all that other stuff far easier when you're grabbing random items and moving them around. The Q key. Number two is a belt weaving. Number two tip is belt weaving. So with belt weaving, you can go like this, but then you can go like this. And these belts can all contain different materials. And you can even weave one more on top of it as well with a blue belt here. <clears throat> so you have triple belt weaved action here and every single belt can be containing something different in it which we will show in one second here so we have the yellow belt and we have the red belts and we have the blue belts and each one of these belts at the end here we're going to show will contain their own individual item so we're going to weave these belts and you don't have to obviously do all three colors, but you can do whatever colors you want. So we will grab these dudes right there. Give us some power for a second. And we are going to insert into each of these a different item. So this one can have laser turrets. So this one can have uh, mining drills. And this one can have bows. And now, as long as they're going the right way. Each one will have a different resource coming out of it. So we got our lasers on the red only. And then we have our mining drills only on the blue. And the yellow is slowly coming out with just the train tracks. So that is belt weaving. Works multiple different ways. Belt weaving. Number three tip is splitters and the witchcraft that they can do. So splitters now have different uh, abilities with them. Um, splitters have priority input and output. So with these splitters here, we can actually force it to filter different items on either side. So here we're actually going to change the railroad tracks to only push out on this side and the medium hydro poles to only go out on that side. So you'll see here, and they just totally switch sides. You can do all sorts of neat things with this setup here, but you just completely switch the sides of the filters filter inserter. This case is a new change in 16 um, and you can definitely do some interesting stuff with this. So they're running on the line next to each other. You can even have them running on the same line and forcibly switch them out. So here we're going to have our, um, we can put train tracks on this one here, railroad tracks, and they're going to forcibly, that's yeah, pretty much not set up properly at all they're forcibly be switched and they'll go in this one here. So they're, they're continuing to go on here even though the splitter goes up there. So with splitters you can do input and output priority by clicking on them. That works with all splitter types. The express, the normal splitter, and the fast splitter. So you can do input and output priorities and you can switch your sides and do all that. That's really going to be helpful especially if you play uh, a very condensed base format. So splitters and the priority input output and the splittering this next tip is a bit of an odd one for me because i'm generally so racially incorrect 
Um, it is a steam engine ratio. Um, so the steam engine ratio is one offshore pump, 20 boilers, and 40 steam engines. That is the maximum amount you can get with uh, one offshore pump. So it is one offshore pump to 20 boilers to 40 steam engines. So if you run more than 40, you are eventually going to a run out of uh, water to make the steam. And then you won't get any power anymore. So it is a 1, 20, 40 ratio. And generally how I like to set it up is to do one boiler for two steam engines. So you can just keep going down like that. And I also put a space in between it with a pipe to ground. That way you can actually move in between your steam engines. Because there's nothing worse than having a giant block of steam engines. And you cannot navigate at all through it. So, 1, 20, 40 ratio. Tip number five is another ratio. It is iron to steel ratio. It is a five iron to one steel ratio. Now, it doesn't matter what type of a building you are smelting your iron in. It is going to be a five to one ratio. But it's actually a one to one building ratio. So, it's one electric furnace to another electric furnace to maximize your steel production. Because each steel plate takes three and a half seconds, as we can tell right here, um, as each iron plate, sorry, takes three and a half seconds. Each steel plate takes 17 and a half seconds, but it needs five of them. So if you do the math, 3.5 times five equals 17.5. So it is a one building to one building ratio. So if you were to make a line of um, iron plates to produce two steel plates, it is just a one to one ratio. So you don't actually, have to belt it, you could just directly smelt into itself like that if you wanted to. So iron to steel is actually a five to one ratio, but it's actually a one smelting to one smelting ratio. Tip number six is one of my favorite ones, uh, once I learned this, is a uh, power line tip. So if you are trying to run a really long power line like this here, you might just kind of go, eh, looks close enough, looks close enough, looks close enough, but you actually don't have to do it like that. So you can actually remove these guys here and you can actually click and hold and run. So clicking, holding, and you see it's, it's trying to place it. I'm still holding the mouse down and it's just going to place it at the exact maximum increment. This works nicely when you run through a forest as well because it will find exactly where it can place it. So there's a whole bunch of trees. It's going to try and exactly place it wherever possible. So it's going to place it perfectly where it can at maximum distance. This works with all different types of power lines. So you can place with this guy here too. So it's connected and it's gonna perfectly place them at maximum distance. So if you want maximum interval spacing, click and hold. That's all you do, click and hold and run. That works if you're driving in a vehicle, a car or a tank or a train. Sometimes it works with a train. Sometimes it goes too fast and you can't quite reach, but that is the trick number six. Tip number seven is a deconstruction planner tip. Uh, once I learned this one, my life was forever altered. So with the deconstruction planner, we got this guy here. Let's say I want to clear this forest out, but I don't want to remove this beautiful setup I have going on here because I'm making dynamite here and it's perfect, but I got these annoying trees in the way. So I could individually select with my bots for my deconstruction planner, or I can right click the deconstruction planner, right mouse button to open and click trees and rocks only now when i select my deconstruction planner going over top of the building i really want to keep but i just needed to clear out some more room the bots will not remove that building they're only removing trees and rocks so that's really nice if you go over top of your entire base and there's some random trees and stuff in there you just hover over it with this deconstruction planner and it only removes trees and rocks beautiful so that's a deconstruction planner. Just right click it, shift right mouse button to clear it, right click to open it, trees and rocks only. That's all you have to do. Easy, easy, easy. Tip number eight is going to be a copy buildings or copy command. Um, this game has tons and tons of hotkeys built into it. And one of them is the shift right click, shift left click command. So let's say that this assembling machine is building gears right now. And we want this one to do it as well. So I see just off the edge of my corner of my peripheral view that this guy is building gears. I shift right click on the building and then I shift left click. But you'll notice that that building is now highlighted. This building highlighted green when I'm hovering over this one. It's saying you have that building 
copied. I'm still holding the shift key. So as I push the shift key, it's showing me. And I shift left click, copied. Then I want this one to build electronic circuits. So I can shift right click from anywhere. As long as you can see it, you can shift right click. Now it's this one. So it used to be that one. Now it's this one. So now we got the green. And then as long as you're in range of accessing the building, you can copy it onto the building. Then I can shift left click, shift right click, shift left click, shift right click, shift left click. This also works on trains as well. So let's say this train right here is going nowhere. Not going anywhere, this train. So we are going to find another train. We go, uh, we got this train right here. This guy right here. This train right now is going to Michael Real Zalat to Ozzy Mendez. We're going to shift right click that train. Go back to this train, shift left click. Now this train's like, oh, I want to go there too. All of them, it copied exactly where that path was going, which is nice if you want to put multiple trains on a track and you don't want to have to set it up again. Shift right click, shift left click. That works for train stations as well. So if you want a train station to have a name of another train station. So right now this train station here is called Takalash, I don't know, who knows? No one even knows how to say that. Literally nobody. So we shift right click this guy, Alec Arctic X9 Blue. Go back to the station here and left click. Now this station is called Alec Arctic X9 Balu. Beautiful. So that is shift right click, shift left click for copying build. Nine is going to be involving beacons, productivity modules to be exact. Now, who doesn't like free things? Pretty sure most of us like free things. So you're gonna have this building this rocket silo, and you're going to get a free um, plus 40% productivity. So every second item, second and a half item, you get a free item. So with a building like this, when you're using such expensive parts to get any brand new free parts, when this bar hits, this purple bar hits full, it's going to get a free part. Um, who doesn't want free stuff? It works with different buildings, it doesn't work with all buildings, the productivity modules, but it does work on rocket silos and it also works on science laboratories. So you're gonna get a free science every time this bar kicks up all the way. You're gonna get a free one of each of these. That's massive. So rocket silos and science labs. I'm not gonna tell you how to play the game, I'm not gonna tell you how to beacon things, but science labs and rocket silos. Beacon them with productivity. You're pretty crazy not to do that because Free stuff. These are very expensive items you're dealing with here at the end of the game. You're dealing with one of every science pack, a red, a green, a blue, a purple, a black, uh, a yellow, and a white science. But you're also dealing with free rockets. How can you go wrong? So, productivity modules. Tip number 10 is going to be have fun with the game. So, Factorio is a game about perfect ratios, trains, building perfection, excess, all different things like that. Now, I challenge you to have fun with the game. Don't worry about perfect ratios. Just build some crazy stuff. Build some crazy train tracks. Play with trains. Play with play with your rockets. Play with your science labs. Build a, build a science sushi setup. Don't have to build everything perfectly every single time. So you can build like this, or you can build like dash, mad dash across the train tracks. You can build like this, or you can make perfect beacon setups. You can drop pictures with concrete. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff. I challenge you to just have fun with the game. Don't worry about perfection. Have fun. Make some crazy art. Make some crazy boat. Make uh, make some crazy solar panel fishing dude with, I don't know, with solar panels and accumulators and draw different things out of uh, concrete and different stuff like that. Have fun with it. Don't get stuck on the perfect ratios. Just enjoy your playthrough. Do what you can do, play what you can play, and have fun with it. So that's tip number 10, is have fun and build some crazy stuff. Shock the community, build crazy, go big, and don't give up. Happy factorialing.